COVID-19 vaccination is extremely important for two main reasons. One, it protects the individual, the person, from severe disease and death. That's first and foremost. The second importance of COVID-19 vaccination is that if many people are vaccinated, uh, so that you have about 60 to 70 percent of people vaccinated, you attain what is called herd immunity, and in herd immunity you have less transmission at the community level. With less transmission, it will mean fewer people will be getting sick uh, uh, whenever there are upsurges. The danger with that is that they are not fully protected, and that very soon, despite that one dose, they'll get sick. The importance of having full vaccination is that you have to get full protection. Also, it's important to note that the first dose of AstraZeneca challenges your body. It, it is like uh, telling your body of, uh, the virus is coming. The second dose is the one that then throws a much better immunity. It is the one that then gives you better protection. So we, without a second dose, you are not fully vaccinated, you are not fully protected. When you get the infection, you may get complications. So I, let me try to be as simple as I can, but also try to really bring the science out. Uh, but start by saying that uh, there is no vaccine that is superior to any other. Mm -hmm. And also to say there has never been a study that compared the efficacy of the six vaccines that have now been approved by WHO. Mm -hmm. What has been done mm -hmm. is that all these vaccines have two important uh, parameters that WHO looks at. Mm -hmm. The first parameter is the prevention of severe disease among people. Yes. And during the clinical trial, mm -hmm. the efficacy in terms of preventing severe disease and therefore hospitalization of all four, these vaccines was 100%, all of them. Mm -hmm. Now, I know people are looking at another parameter known as uh, the efficacy of mild to moderate. Yes. That is stopping uh, spread of disease from one person to another. Mm -hmm. That is, in clinical trials, it's called efficacy. Mm -hmm. But when you now deploy the vaccine like we have done in Kenya, it is known as effectiveness. Mm -hmm. And effectiveness can have various parameters. It can depend on where the study is done, it can depend on the stage of the, the epidemic. Mm -hmm. Do we have a surge or not? Mm -hmm. So you might get a vaccine that says they are 90%, but it was done when there was very little coronavirus in the community. So Kenyans should not be cheated by numbers. Mm -hmm. They are known as epidemiological figures mm -hmm. that should be discussed a lot more from the science perspective. What is important in this stage? at the moment is that severe disease should not take place mm -hmm. and that's why you need vaccine. Mm -hmm. The issue of reduction will start becoming important of course in future when we really want to attain herd immunity mm -hmm. uh, but it will also depend on whether these vaccines will have been compared at the same time in the same environment. Mm -hmm. uh, let me start by saying the issue to do with vaccination. Mm -hmm. Vac the, the vaccines can uh, elicit what you call an, an a hormonal response. Mm -hmm. Remember the, uh, the um, uh, menses mm -hmm. are controlled by uh, certain hormones. Mm -hmm. So it, not only with COVID-19 vaccines, but with a number of vaccines, that could uh, interrupt the menses, but it doesn't mean it is affecting the fertility. Yeah. You know, there are many other factors that can also interrupt menses, including changing climatic conditions. Mm -hmm. That does not therefore mean you, you are then becoming, you are going to lose your fertility. Yeah. So in a few, not in every single woman, mm -hmm. uh, um, because of this hormonal um, uh, 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 change mm -hmm. brought about by the vaccine, mm -hmm. there could be um, interference with the menses, they could delay or be prolonged. Mm -hmm. But this clears, it's one of those side effects that will clear with time. Yes. They will go back to normal. Women should not fear at all yes. 
they should know that even because of pregnancy now, there is, we are seeing that uh, pregnant women could easily lose their child from the coronavirus. Yeah. So they need to go for this vaccination. Mm -hmm. They need the vaccine because right from the beginning of this pandemic, mm -hmm. even among the very first people who got infected and the symptoms disappeared, Three, four months later, they were again reinfected, meaning they were they again got the infection. Yes. So there's nothing like natural immunity. This is one disease where natural immunity did not does not seem to offer any prolonged protection. Mm -hmm. And that is why it is being supplemented by vaccination mm -hmm. with the new vaccines which have come, which make your body react in such a way that you are you are protected for much longer mm -hmm. so even if you've got that infection earlier you still need to be vaccinated to be better protected natural infection does not offer you full protection mm -hmm. you will still get this infection and also mm -hmm. if we have to reduce and protect communities mm -hmm. it is the vaccination immunity brought about by vaccination that is going to help us reduce the transmission. Uh, what we need to be aware is that if we say natural, you know corona kills, yes. so who are we going to allow to, to die so mm -hmm. that we, we, we stop transmission in the yeah. community? Yeah. That is called breakthrough infection. Mm -hmm. The breakthrough infections are being seen. Mm -hmm. uh, they are ranging between uh, to, uh, between 5 and 8% mm -hmm. of people fully vaccinated mm -hmm. can still uh, have breakthrough infection. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the important point and which is good is that even with a breakthrough infection, mm -hmm. the disease is not as severe. Yeah. So you, 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 will still, you still have some protection, but you can get hospitalization. Mm -hmm. uh, but not as severe, we have, we've come across uh, uh, such people. Because what is important to note is that vaccine do not stop transmission. Yes. Even when you are vaccinated, mm -hmm. you can transmit to the next person mm -hmm. and you yourself can also still get it. Mm -hmm. The only thing the vaccine does is to reduce that severe disease. But now in a few cases, you get the so-called breakthrough infections that will be a bit severe mm -hmm. but many clinical people are saying mm -hmm. they are not as bad as if they were not vaccinated okay. the issue of mix and match mm -hmm. is something that i really want to tell kenyans mm -hmm. that once we have evidence mm -hmm. we will let them know mm -hmm. public health policies are built on evidence it is not one study or two studies or hyping of one study in media that should make you form a policy. It should go through interrogation by other experts. And the most important thing is insufficient data to form policy. In a global pandemic like this, the World Health Organization, which is the global body that looks at health globally, is very key for us to harmonize our policies. So on the issue of mix and match, mm -hmm. as we speak now, WHO has said there isn't enough data to make it policy. Mm -hmm. However, they have said in situations where there may be vaccine constraints, mm -hmm. that may be used even as we continue looking for more data. Yes. Now in Kenya now we have sufficient doses of AstraZeneca. Mm -hmm. We are making sure we are receiving a second dose of Moderna and mm -hmm. Pfizer. And we are also using the single shot Johnson. Mm -hmm. So the issue of mix and match should now not be a priority. Mm -hmm. And people should not start developing biases that I, even if I've been done this, I still need this. That is going to confuse the, our entire picture. Uh, so let me uh, really say that and say, mm -hmm. even after WHO guidance, Kenya has a process of public health policy. In terms of immunization, we have the Kenyan National Immunization Technical Advisory Group. Mm -hmm. This is the one with experts. I'm a public health expert, but I'm not a vaccine expert. <laughs> okay. 
So we listen to the vaccine experts. Mm -hmm. They are going to look at the data and then tell us this is fine, then it becomes policy. Yes. It's also important to note mm -hmm. that when vaccines are given what is known as emergency use authorization, yes. the manufacturer will tell you how to use it. Mm -hmm. If you use it outside what they told you and anything happens, they will say that is not what they told you. Yes. Yeah. In fact, this is this has been a subject of discussion by the task force most of today morning, mm -hmm. and we've looked at very key people that we want to uh, partner with, mm -hmm. accelerate the vaccination program. Mm -hmm. The religious leaders, Christians and Muslims, are going to be very key in the next phase of our vaccination program. Mm -hmm. We are going to engage them. Mm -hmm. We want to share with them the key messages. Mm -hmm. We want to use places of worship to be centers where we do vaccinations. Mm -hmm. We want them to be on the forefront to address some of the myths and misinformation. Mm -hmm. So we are going to equip them with the right information on what to tell Kenyans. Yeah. The other thing is that the public health system in Kenya has also for many years ridden on or, or, uh, uh, road on the uh, platform of community health workers. Mm -hmm. They have got a lot of training you know, on public health measures. They already have a lot of information and they are the closest to the communities. We want to use them first and foremost to mobilize people to come for vaccination. We want them to identify people with disabilities, with underlying medical conditions who have not been vaccinated mm -hmm. so that we are able to conduct outreaches. The plan is underway. Uh, we are going to release our deployment plan, I, I think, a day or so from now. Mm -hmm. We've e e explained how this, we are, we've given guidance mm -hmm. how we are going to work this. Yeah. And you, you, you need to appreciate it may vary from one county to another. Mm -hmm. Remember, there are different challenges. Northeastern Kenya, with now very low outtake and mobile population, mm -hmm. the strategies may be different from what we may deploy in other areas. Yeah. And, and therefore, for us, we will give the guidance, mm -hmm. but the county governments will really be the ones that execute these strategies. Mm -hmm. So the, the plan and exactly what they will do really will be done by them. We have three and our fourth one. Yeah. So we started with AstraZeneca mm -hmm. uh, from March. Mm -hmm. Then uh, in, in August, we've gotten a uh, Moderna came mm -hmm. and we've deployed it. Mm -hmm. The first week of September, we got Johnson & Johnson. Yeah. And next week we are getting Pfizer. Yeah. And before the end of September, we should be having the Sinopharm. Yeah. We have adequate capacity for most of the vaccines. Mm -hmm. The capacity we were lacking until just yesterday mm -hmm. is the so-called, uh, is for Pfizer, storage and transportation yes. of Pfizer. Mm -hmm. uh, Pfizer is a vaccine, and, uh, it's a type of vaccine that is called messenger RNA. It requires storage at minus 70 degrees centigrade, between minus 70 and minus 80 degrees centigrade, mm -hmm. and therefore it requires a specialized storage. Mm -hmm. So yesterday we got ultra cold chain storage that can maintain up to minus 86. Mm -hmm. uh, we got 12 of them. They will go to the nine regional stores mm -hmm. and three of them will be at the, uh, our central vaccine stores. Mm -hmm. And they can store up to three million doses of mm -hmm. Pfizer. Mm -hmm. Then in terms of transportation, you must also maintain minus 70. Mm -hmm. So you saw us getting what you call portable vaccine freezers, yes. which use dry ice to maintain the vaccine at minus 70 as you remove it from the regional stores to the vaccination post. Mm -hmm. Once you reach the vaccination post, now Pfizer can be used at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade, positive 2 to positive 8 degrees, which is the normal refrigerator. Mm -hmm. But once it goes to 2 to 8, it must be used within 28 days. So that is why we have said Pfizer will only be used in facilities that have a large turnout of people. Yeah. 
so that if we take 2,000 doses or 3,000 doses, mm. they must be fully utilized within a month. Yes. As I've said, storage mm -hmm. will be at the regional stores. Mm -hmm. Then they will use the transport boxes, mm -hmm. and once it reaches where you are going to vaccinate, mm -hmm. you use the normal refrigerator for Pfizer. Mm -hmm. The counties are ready. Mm -hmm. We have trained healthcare workers. For the last three weeks, mm -hmm. We have been training healthcare workers across the country mm -hmm. on the administration of all the five types of vaccines mm -hmm. that we are going to deploy in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Initially, they had only been trained on AstraZeneca. Now they have been trained on Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson, and Sinopharm. Yes. And now they have gone out there and they are now ready to deploy any of those vaccines. At this time of our deployment, we do not have the luxury of choosing. That may come much, much later when we have enough doses. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, no. As I've said, all these vaccines are the same. So what we are doing is to allocate a vaccine in a facility. When you go to that facility, what you'll get is a COVID-19 vaccine, quality assured by the World Health Organization, and therefore, if you are vaccinated, you are vaccinated against COVID-19. Let me explain this. The lower facilities mm -hmm. will have one type of vaccine. Mm -hmm. So you'll have no choice if you go to a health center dispensary. Mm -hmm. Yes, they will only stock one vaccine. And that is why mm -hmm. the task force has highly recommended mm -hmm. we are not going to emphasize on the brand. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm disappointed that some private hospitals uh, have started emphasizing the brand. Yes. What we should be saying is COVID vaccination is taking place here. Mm -hmm. When you are vaccinated, you'll be told this is Moderna, you come back after four weeks, mm -hmm. AstraZeneca come back after eight weeks, mm -hmm. Pfizer come back after four weeks. Mm -hmm. That is what we want to do because you are right. Yes. If we choose, and now this is, is, remember we need to vaccinate as many people and as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. If we choose at this point of the pandemic, mm -hmm. we are not going to achieve our targets. Mm -hmm. And you are right, mm -hmm. vaccines could go to waste. That is not what we want. It will depend on availability of vaccines. Mm -hmm. You know, during our first phase that ended in June, we did not have enough vaccines. Mm -hmm. However, the vaccine situation improved. Mm -hmm. Right now, we are getting more and more vaccines. Mm -hmm. We have got 5 million doses already with us, mm -hmm. and about 3 million vaccinations have been done so far. Yes. With 3 million vaccinations, and now with 5 million, by end of September, I believe 5 million vaccinations will have been done. Mm -hmm. And then we will have 3 months to do another 5 million. Yes. One of the things that delayed the vaccination recently was that training of health workers had to take place. Yes. That is a very crucial thing. Mm -hmm. uh, because unless you know how to handle these vaccines, you could actually end up with more trouble. I've been reading some reports in countries where what you said, yes. that there's uh, two vaccines being administered in the same facility. In a country which I won't name, mm -hmm somebody took the Moderna into the deep freeze of Pfizer. Yes. They froze and that was the end. Those vaccines were lost. Mm -hmm. And that is why even in Kenya we have said the even if a facility will have two or three, at most three va vaccines, mm -hmm. they will never be administered from the same point. Yes. It has to be totally different points of that hospital. Mm -hmm. we, I can assure Kenyans we are going to reach the 10 million target. Yes. But my assurance is in terms of availability. Of but they must come and take it. Yes. <laughs> so it is the responsibility is dual. Yes. It's not only government. Yes. Government is doing everything to bring the vaccine. Yes. 